There are two big problems with conversational prospecting that make it a pretty bad method to scale your B2B consulting business. And in today's video, we will cover these two drawbacks. We will cover why conversational prospecting is still a very good way to get your feet wet when you're starting out or in the early stages of your B2B consulting or agency business, but also how you can ultimately transcend it and book five to 10 calls without much of your personal involvement. All right, so let's get straight into it. My name is Michael Bohannes. I help B2B service providers build client acquisition systems and be less dependent on referrals. And one of the ways how we always start with our clients when they don't have a huge amount of experience is conversational prospecting. It's effectively you approach people on LinkedIn and you start a friendly conversation, guiding the dialogue into a direction where you want it to go so that ultimately you can make them an offer to have a call so that you can sell them something. And this is a really good method because you get qualitative feedback, right? If you were to, for example, just send cold email, you effectively with that person in that very moment, you have one shot, right? You give them, you put something in front of them, you put an offer in front of them, a value proposition, and then it's a binary reaction. Either they react positively or not. And of course, most often it's they don't react positively or they don't react at all, but you don't know why they didn't like it. Maybe some will respond and say, hey, I didn't like this email because of XYZ, but that's really rare. And it also might not be representative. You could get an email campaign where you have a really good positive reply rate, let's say 5%, and then still five or 10% of people would give you very negative feedback. They say, hey, this is a really poor method of reaching out still doesn't mean anything because the five positive percent are what counts. But point being here, it is binary feedback. It is an either or. The great thing about conversational prospecting is that you get much better qualitative feedback. People tell you what they are struggling with. Let's say, for example, that you're selling culture change, organizational change. And through your conversations with people on LinkedIn, you realize that this is more of a downstream problem that at the very core is a more deeper problem that they don't know what to do. They don't know what a strategy they should be taking in the face of a specific challenge. And while you're selling the solution that is downstream, culture change, you realize through the qualitative involvement with them that it's actually the strategy problem that they need to solve first. So you can then maybe upgrade your skill set a little bit and then offer that strategy work before. And then culture change will come as a natural consequence of that. But that is the kind of qualitative feedback you get. You would never get that over cold email or running ads. And so that's why conversational prospecting is super, super important when you are starting out a business or you're in your early stage, you do product discovery, you're trying to find customer service fit. And not only is conversational prospecting great for customer discovery, you can actually make a pretty decent living with it just on LinkedIn. And here are the numbers. If you add 100 people every week, and if you do that well, if you do it personalized, you can maybe get 40 to 50 new connections. You can start 30 conversations a week, and then you book three calls, maybe two, three sales calls. And over the course of a month, you will be maybe able to close one. So you can get one new client every month. And if you're charging, you know, five to 10K per client, that's a decent, okay living that you can make purely on LinkedIn just by starting friendly conversations. But of course, there are two big problems with conversational prospecting. Number one is that it takes a lot of time to do. And number two, and that is the crucial one, because if it just took time, then you could simply outsource it to someone. But number two is that it takes cognitive effort. It even takes industry expertise to become really good at it. Let me explain what I mean. When you have a cold email method and you are using people to send it, which by the way, I recommend, I also have virtual assistants doing my email send outs because tools tend to land you in spam much more and you cannot personalize as well, for example, using Loom videos if you're using tools than if you're working with virtual assistants. Boy, that human touch makes always a tiny bit of a difference. That is quite crucial. But while you can outsource this kind of relative mechanical activity where you need only a modicum of human judgment to do it well, when it comes to conversational prospecting, you need a lot of good human judgment. And I would not expect that a average virtual assistant who you get can actually do conversational prospecting on your behalf. There's a lot of industry expertise that comes into it to do it well. For example, when they tell you that it's a strategy problem, you need to ask really good follow-up questions to get to the heart of the problem. Somebody who you're paying a couple of bucks per hour who's sending emails for you, they will not be able to do that. It would be just unfair to expect that from them. If you had, let's say, a young apprentice in the business who's with you full time and they have really developed a sensibility for what you're selling, then maybe you could do that. It's still much 
more difficult to transplant that kind of level of expertise into somebody who you can pay a lower hourly salary to, which makes it scalable, of course. So given these two problems, what can you do with it? Look, if you want to scale, conversational prospecting is a very good start. But if you reframe how you see it, it's just an interim phase where you are aiming to discover product market fit, service market fit. If you do that, then you can uncover, aha, this is a good sales argument that people respond to well, and you can then take it and put it into a cold email campaign or into a more scaled DM campaign on LinkedIn where you can use automation tools or other people's LinkedIn accounts. I'll give you a good example. I realized through conversation prospecting that one of the bigger pain points that my clients were facing was their dependency on referrals. Many people don't like that. Some people are okay with it, especially if business is booming. If they get so many referrals that they don't know what to do with them, they have more business than they can handle. But most people dislike it and have a little bit of a queasy feeling about being dependent on referrals because, of course, it's not durable, right? If you don't have control over your business, if you don't know that you have a machine, that if you put a certain amount of work or money into it, a client will fall out on the other end, then you're in quite an insecure spot. And that is what conversation prospecting allowed me to uncover. And now I can use that argument and turn it into a high quality cold email that I reach out to people and they respond positively, they book a call. And that now can be done at scale. And we're sending 100 cold emails every day, and 2 to 3% of people respond very positively to it. They book a call, and some of them become clients. So that's the main message here. See conversational prospecting as a means to uncover that one thing, or maybe it's going to be several, right? You can then run two, three different types of campaigns because you've uncovered two, three pain points that your audience faces, but don't see conversational prospecting as something you'll be doing for a long time. And in this context, I strongly recommend the book, The Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick. It is a book that changed my life because I started my first business on a false premise. I started something that people didn't need. And I allowed myself through bad market research, which is what the book covers. It covers how to do good market research. I did bad market research. And that's how I sank 150 grand in a bad venture because I had not done the work that the book describes. So I strongly recommend you get that. This is how to have conversations with people who you in the early stage of your business book calls with. And conversational prospect is a very good way of doing that. Cool. I hope this was useful. Please leave a like or a comment or a share, whatever platform you're listening this on. Recommend it to a few other people. That's how they can discover it. And I'll talk to you in the next video.